This lecture is part of an online course of multivariable calculus and I'm going to talk about applications of Green's theorem. So let me start by giving you a recall of Green's theorem. So Green's theorem says what? If you have the line integral of a vector field F over a closed curve C and F has coordinates P and Q which are functions of X and Y and then DR I can write this as DX DY and so I can write this line integral in here as P DX plus Q DY okay using Green's theorem it's equal to the double integral over the region R which is what? The region R is the region that is enclosed by the curve C. So if we have the closed curve C, the region R is the region that is inside that. And it would be the double integral over the inside the region R of Q with respect to X minus P with respect to Y, D, A. Okay, so now let's go over the applications. The first application would be um, the theorem that we talked about it last time. The theorem was what? If the vector field F is conservative, and defined on the whole plane R square, then the integral of f dr over the closed curve c is equal to 0 for all simply closed curves c. Simply closed, it means that the curve that is closed but it doesn't cross itself so for example this one is not a simply closed um, curve okay so if the vector field f is conservative meaning what meaning that f is gradient of a function okay um, then the the integral of that of over any closed curve C is zero. Let me give you the proof of this theorem and the proof is this. So the line integral of F dr over C using Green's theorem it's just because it's um, the integral over a closed curve so that's why I can use Green's theorem. And I'm gonna say that it's the double integral of R Q with respect to X minus P with respect to Y dA. But look at here. If you remember, for the conservative vector field, the criteria that we have is this. Since F is conservative, we have derivative of P, the first coordinate with respect to y is equal to q with respect to x, the second the partial derivative of the second coordinate with respect to x. So this is the criteria for the conservative vector field, and that's why the whole part in here, the whole integrand, is equal to 0. And so the answer for this integral is equal to 0, meaning that the line integral is 0. So as you see, we could prove this theorem very easily using Green's theorem. Okay, So the second application of Green's theorem is finding the area of a region R. So if you remember the area of any region R of region R using double integral is was what? It was the double integral, I'm going to put 1 in there over the region that I want to take um, its area, right? So now, 
if the region R is closed, is um, it has a boundary curve C. So if this is my region R and it has the boundary as the curve C, I can write this as what? As so this is the double integral of 1 dA over R. So it could be equal to the line integral over the closed curve C of P dx plus Q dy. Okay. So as you see, the area of the region R region R can be found be found by calculating calculating along uh, a line integral along its boundary along its boundary okay very good so that was the definition of the area of a region and then we use Green's theorem to calculate the line integral of that let's see um, I want to calculate this line integral so I need to find a P and Q such that this is equal to QX minus PY it's just the definition of Green's theorem, right? So I want to find Q and P such that Q with respect to X minus P with respect to Y should be equal to 1. Let's see. I can take, like, let's take Q to be equal to 0 and P to be equal to negative Y. And in that case, Q with respect to X is 0 p with respect to y is negative 1 times another negative I get positive 1 so the answer is 1 so now I can calculate the line integral over the closed curve c of p is equal to negative y dx and then plus 0 dy so if I calculate this line integral over the boundary of the region r then I'm able to find the area of the region R. Let's take another one. Let's say Q to be equal to X and P equals to 0. Now Q with respect to X is 1, P with respect to Y is equal to 0. That's why um, this summation in here would be equal to 1. So now instead of calculating the double integral of 1 dA over R, I can calculate this line integral over the closed curve C, where P is equal to 0 dx plus Q is x dy. So if I calculate this line integral over the boundary of the region R, I can calculate um, the area of R. And the last one which is helpful, let me use another color for that, like this one. So if Q is equal to 1 half x and P equal to 1 half y actually let me make it negative so q with respect to x would be one half p with respect to y would be negative one half that's why one half negative negative one half it would be equal to one so i'm going to calculate the line integral over c over the closed curve c of p which is negative one half y dx plus one half x dy let me make it better i'm gonna write this in a nicer format negative y over 2 dx plus x over 2 dy very good so this one that one and this one these three they are gonna give me the area of the region R which is bounded by the curve C in here okay let's look at one example and see how it works the example is this 
find the area find the area of the ellipse x square over 5 square plus y square over 4 square equals to 1. Okay, let me graph the ellipse first. x axis, y axis, I have one ellipse in here. And then when y is equal to 0, x square would be equal to 5 square. So x is plus minus 5, plus 5. And then when x is equal to 0, y squared would be equal to 4 squared. So y is plus minus 4. Negative 4 plus 4. And the area of this ellipse I'm looking for. So let me write the solution. The area of the region R, which is the region in here, is the double integral of 1 dA over R. Let me set up the double integral, okay? I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do dx first and then dy. When I do dx first, I'm gonna have a parallel line to the x-axis. This is the first point, this is the end point, okay? So x is equal to what? Let me isolate x, so I'm gonna have one I'm going to bring this one on the other side, multiply it by 5 squared. So it's negative 5, 1 minus y squared over 4 squared to x, 5 square root of 1 minus y squared over 4 squared. And then I can have this line is starting at here, which is y from negative 4 up to y equals to 4. Okay, I need to um, solve this integral, which is a little hard. Okay, that's why I'm going to use a line integral because this region is enclosed by a curve C in here. Okay, it's oriented counterclockwise to be positively oriented. And I'm going to use a line integral. Let's look at these three line integrals and see which one to use in here. Let's let's look at the hardest one. Let's look at this one. It's equal to the line integral over the closed curve C, okay, which is what which is the which is basically the ellipse of negative y over two dx plus x over two dy. Okay, so it's basically a line integral. That's why I need to parameterize, parameterize the curve C. How do I do that? Well, I say let's take x to be equal to 5 cosine t and y to be equal to 4 sine t. Okay, and then dx would be negative 5 sine t dt. Let me move this one a little bit. Sine t dt. And then dy is 4 cosine t dt. And then t starts at 0 and it goes up to 2 pi. This is parameterization of the ellipse, right? That I'm going to use in here. Okay, so it would be from 0 to 2 pi of um, negative, instead of y, I have 4 sine t. So 4 sine t divided by 2. Instead of dx, I have negative 5 sine t dt. So negative 5 sine t dt plus x is 5 cosine t divided by 2, and then dy is 4 cosine t dt. I hope I'm correct. <laughs> okay, so it's from 0 to 2 pi. Let's just simplify it a little bit. I get what this 2 and that 2 would be canceled, so I get 
negative 2 times negative 5 it would be 10 sine t square and here I get 20 divided by 2 plus 10 cosine t squared dt so factor out the 10 0 to 2 pi I get sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt this is equal to 1 and so I have 10 the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 dt which would be 10 t from 0 to 2 pi it would be 10 times 2 pi so the answer is 20 pi as you see uh, setting up the line integral was easier to find the area of the ellipse okay um, if the ellipse was like this ellipse like that x square over a square plus y square over b square equals to 1 then the area of that would be pi a b which um, would be a and b in here would be 5 and 4 and that's why we get uh, 20 pi